Today, on the early morning show, the placebo effect, how our brains trick us into believing we're in love. Let's cue the rooster and get this show started. Every time I need this shit, devil make another. Hey man, if you got something that you believe in and you believe that you can do it and nobody else do, just go for it. It's your life. My life is moving fast, I gotta slow it down Yeah, now I got it, they all come around But when I ain't have it, they know where to be found Yeah, I had to stick with the ones who stay down And now a lot of people say I changed on them Because I'm whipping in the range on them I don't think I'm acting different I just found out that these folks ain't in my interest And you ain't got a lot of kick it. I messed around and pulled a whole four up Banging zero, I roll up Good morning and welcome to the early morning show. Today on the show, the placebo effect. How to tell the difference between real love and false love. Did you know that certain brain chemicals in the body trick us into believing we are in love when we're not? Also coming up on uh, the man's bartender, we have the mixed drink grenadine fizz. In the man's kitchen, we have oven style whiskey barbecue chicken. And now, the placebo effect. How to tell the difference between real love and false love in our lives. Remember, the last time you ran into someone you believed to be sexually attractive, you might have stumbled over your own feet. Your palms and your hands were sweaty, right? You probably said something incredibly stupid, and chances are your heart was thudding so loud in your chest, you thought you could hear it. And you thought they could hear it. Now, why is it that we fall in love with some of the worst people so easily and out of love with them so very hard? Could it be because we never were in love with them to start with? I think so. You see, each time we engage in a relationship with someone we find attractive, our brains release a combination of natural chemicals that prepare us for sex and bonding with that person through the coupling process. It's just a trick. Now these chemicals for both sexes are dopamine. Dopamine is known as the feel-good uh, neurotransmitter, a chemical that ferries information between neurons in your brain, so back and forth, right? The brain releases it when we eat food that we crave or while we have sex. Now these contribute to the feelings of pleasure and satisfaction as part of the reward system in our bodies. There are also certain foods that release dopamine, so not just sex. So dairy foods such as milk, cheese and yogurt, unprocessed meats such as beef, chicken and turkey, omega-3 uh, rich fish such as salmon and mackerel, eggs, fruit and vegetables in particular bananas, nuts such as almonds and walnuts, and dark chocolate. Now dopamine can also be released with the attachment to buying your own uh, material goods or something you crave. So I gotta have that car, I gotta have that mansion, I gotta have this, I gotta have that. In short, we are driven to this person for the pleasure they may bring us, not for the actual pleasure or lack of it they actually present. The next chemical that, that the brain gives us in the placebo effect of false love is uh, neonephrine. Now, neonephrine increases heart rate and blood pumping from the heart. It also increases blood pressure and helps break down fat and increase blood sugar levels to provide more energy to the body. In short, that feeling you have when your heart skips a beat, when you meet that someone you believe is the right one. Remember, they are the right one for me. Also, that exciting feeling you feel in their presence. When this chemical is out of whack, you can feel an increased heart rate when you believe that they are cheating on you or uh, are jealous of them. So if you're jealous of them. And finally, the chemical that draws you close initially is serotonin. Serotonin, you can also get uh, serotonin from food, but you can get uh, like tryptophan, which is an amino acid that's converted to serotonin in your brain. Tryptophan is readily available in foods like uh, turkey meat. Exercise, you can get it from bright light, supplements, and massage. And this chemical is important if you are uh, to feel comfortable with this person in your presence for as long as you define a relationship to them. Now, 
I would like to stop here before I go any further and explain in layman's terms how we choose the wrong person. Remember, this is the right one for me. But are they? How many times have you heard friends or yourself say that they have found the right person or the right one? This is improbable for one reason, due to the fact that your body is tricking you. I want you to imagine that you feel that you have just found the right one out of a planet full of 8 billion people. That is about evenly split male and female, so about 4 billion apiece. How can this person be the right person when you can easily get on a plane, fly halfway around the world, and run into someone else you consider the right one? You could actually get into many relationships, end up feeling that you got the wrong person, and your feelings hurt, and start the process all over again the next month. Just as long as the binding chemicals in our brains prepare you for mating trick. See? They prepare you to mating trick into thinking that this person is the right person. Now, <clears throat> when either gender are not in the presence of one another, they are still driven to their natural body chemistry of testosterone, which makes a man a man, and for the woman, estrogen, which makes a woman a woman. Now, when we have sex with these people, we bond further into relationships we should run away from with the chemical oxytocin. Now, oxytocin uh, is a thing that you get from hugging, kissing, cuddling, and sexual intimacy and can all trigger oxytocin production, which can strengthen bonds between adults, even the adults which your friends tell you that aren't good for you. Oxytocin is typically linked to warm, fuzzy feelings and shown in research to lower stress and anxiety. It's also into the production and the moving of sperm. Oxytocin has the power to regulate our emotional responses and pro-social behaviors, including trust, empathy, gazing, positive memories, processing of bonding cues and positive communication. These effects have led oxytocin to be grouped with those other happy hormones uh, that we get. Now, hormones known to have positive impact on the mood and emotions, and finally, the brain chemical vasopressin. Vasopressin is linked to behavior that produces long-term monogamous relationships. Remember, vasopressin. This chemical can make you tuned in and turned on to a long-term relationship with a person who is the worst lover in the world. They can send you every signal throughout the relationship that they have no respect for you. They don't even want to be with you. In fact, they desire to be with another person. But this portion of the brain chemical still helps you hold on to hope that they will come around to loving you for a relationship one day. Okay, so your brain is not interested, is, <clears throat> your brain is not interested in the sanity of that person when bonding you with somebody else. It's not interested in their creditworthiness, their homemaking abilities, or their love for you. Our brain's just trying to usher you into a lightning uh, round relationship just as fast as possible without any cognizant forethought. So vasopressin is another important hormone when it comes to relationships. Scientists study the <coughs> prairie vole, which is an animal, which is known to be monogamous and to express vasopressin like humans and they found it was the same thing. So are you in a relationship that seems red hot within the first two weeks, but ended up ice cold thereafter? Tell us your story and how these chemicals helped to enhance your decision to either get into a relationship or to find a brand new one and get the hell out. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. It's five o'clock on a planet somewhere and we're about to get our drink on. Welcome to the man's bottle. Inspired from pomegranate juice, today we're doing a grenadine fizz. Stick around. Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? Today we're doing a grenadine fizz on the man's bartender. Come on, let's do it. Okay, so what we want to do for the grenadine fizz, we need some ingredients, right? Rotate. <laughs> okay, what we want to start off with is some soda water. Which you can get seltzer water, whatever you want to get. You want a little sweetness to it, you can do a 7-Up. You can do a Mountain Dew, it doesn't matter. Then we'll do some grenadine. Grenadine is a sweetener, okay? If you watched, uh, what was it? Family Guy? American Dad. You would have seen Roger complain to him 
when you go to the store, make sure you pick me up some grenadine. And then he didn't do it, and Roger took care of him, right? Okay. Anyway, now I want some vodka. We're using Pinnacle Vodka, one of my favorites. And we're using some simple syrup. So when you go to the grocery store, this is not alcohol, this is simple syrup. It's also a sweetener. Simple syrup sometimes comes in a clear, small clear bottle, looks something like that, or brownish like that. Simple syrup is more of a cooked sugar. You can cook it yourself if you like to. You can save yourself time. And after that, you want a glass. You fill it up with ice. We're going to use a barrel shaker. When we're finished, we're going to add a lime slice to it. We're going to add lemon juice to it. So, let's get started. All right, now the first thing we want to do, want to did past tense, is we want to add some ice to that barrel shaker about halfway. So remember, those barrel shakers make the drink cold. When you finish, you pour the drink into your ice. You never take the ice in a barrel shaker and pour that in. So that's why the ice is already there. You always got the ice that wants to jump out, don't you? <laughs> the ice is alive! It's alive! Alrighty, that should have done it. And now to that, what we want to do is I'm going to add about a half of lemon juice to that. I don't need any more than that, I don't think so. Okay, so there we have it. Squeeze that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That lemon will give it some tang, and you need some tang. You know what, yeah. Alright, and I'm done. Now, to that we want to add, we're going to do about four ounces of that Pinnacle Vodka. But really, we're doing for two people. We better do eight ounces. All right, now, that's drink worthy. Looks like I'm almost out of that Pinnacle Vodka too. Now to that we want to add the grenadine. We're going to add about four ounces of that. And that's a little bit thicker. You're going to need half what you needed of the uh, vodka. So don't go crazy. It goes a long ways. Grenadine can sweeten a lot of drinks and it doesn't cost much. You can get that online when if you order to the house, uh, any kind of uh, store online, Amazon, whatever it is, Walmart. And today we're going to add a small portion of that simple syrup. There we go. Now we're at the point. We're not going to add that salsa water in there because if we did, it'd be all over the place. Okay, we take it, like I've always told you. Put that out front where you guys can see it. You see that? You see it? Where's it gonna shake? Shake it how you want to. Shake it how you want to. We want to do it about a minute. You always want to do it long enough where you see it's cold like that and you get something worthy of it. Because otherwise, that alcohol won't be able to infuse with the rest of those ingredients. So you want to shake it long enough. And we're done. Nice and cold, right? All righty. We'll take it off. See how it looks now? Beautiful, right? Okay. Wanna leave about almost 25% of the distance. That's the job of the seltzer water. Some 
fizz. It's the whole purpose. You got friends over. You're going to enjoy yourself. As long as you're doing something different, you want to always entertain differently. You don't want to be a clone when you're doing something. You have friends over, have more for a reason. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut those nice and thin. Now just hold this like a deck of cards. Okay, so there's one. Tuck that in the glass. And there be the other one. Always to you. Humming, 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 humming. That's some kind of good. We'll see you guys in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Up next is the man's kitchen. Sweet tasting barbecue chicken made with alcohol. Whiskey barbecue. We'll be right back. Mm. Something good. Something good. I hope to see you back next time on the man's bartender. Join me each week, and we're going to be making some great drinks some crazy drinks, and stuff that you can prepare for your friends at a party where it looks like you've been a bartender for a long time. Today on The Man's Kitchen, we're making whiskey barbecue barbecue chicken, and you don't need a grill for that. Stick around. Hello and welcome to The Man's Kitchen. Today we're going to be doing barbecue chicken. Now there's a lot of ways to do barbecue chicken. You can either fry the chicken and dip it in a barbecue sauce. You can fry the chicken on a grill and paint the barbecue sauce on it. Wet mixture or dry mixture. Or you can do what uh, some of the national chains do. National chains like KFC and the rest of them. Instead of throwing the chicken away, they reserve all the chicken that was not eaten that day that was cooked. They put that into a cooler. The next day, they barbecue that particular chicken. So if you always thought they did fresh chicken or barbecue, they do not. It's always day-old chicken. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do chicken that's already been cooked. We're going to barbecue that, and then we're going to pan fry it in the oven. Okay? Or bake it in the oven. Put it that way. Now, like I said, you can do this many ways. If you choose to, you can fry your own chicken and then barbecue it. You can fry it in a pan or an oven. On a grill, it doesn't matter. You can go out and get some KFC chicken, some Popeye's chicken, some Church's chicken, bring that back home, put barbecue sauce on that, let it marinate a little bit, and then put it in the oven for sear or bake. Today we're gonna use something different. We're gonna use a national brand banquet chicken. It's the same thing like a KFC chicken. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the banquet chicken. We're also gonna use some of the Rufus Teague's uh, whiskey maple uh, barbecue sauce and that's some great barbecue sauce so in this show I always try to bring you guys the best so I'm not trying to give you guys something that's stale you can buy go out and get the Heinz or you can get the, whatever you want to but this one I got this one at amazon.com you can get it wherever you want to but it's asking actually whiskey in there so if you want to put something to the chicken you start off with a chicken that's already boxed and then put the flavor to it that's what we're about to do we're about to put our foot down on that chicken. Now, we're gonna use a pan just like this one. You notice I have a bag inside of that one because we're gonna marinate that chicken that's already cooked in that bag. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator probably for about four hours at the middle. Now the chicken's still frozen, that's completely fine. So that's not a problem. Now if this chicken was frozen, or if you had actually cooked it and you had some left over from the day before, you could always use that one. Because all you're really doing, like the national chains are, you are coating the outside of that chicken. Okay? So, what we're going to do is, the only reason I'm not using this bag because there's no seal on this particular bag that I'm taking it out of. Alright. So we're going to transfer it to this bag because there's a seal on this bag. 
leave it in that pan. We go ahead and put the pieces down in that one. So when you have the fat pieces like the breast or the thigh, you want to put the thicker portion of it down flat so it absorbs more of the barbecue sauce for a couple of hours before you flip it to do the other side. You don't want to do the bone side down. Most of the flavor in the chicken is on the meatier portion of the chicken, so you want that to face down. Okay, there's another fat portion there. We got the bone in the back. The meat's on this side, we want to face that down. So all of this should be able to fit in here just nicely. Another one, there's a meaty portion, face that down. And we want all of that really flat so the flavor can sink in. There's another drumstick, and that should be it, because usually these uh, companies used to make a lot of chicken, but now they've gotten pretty cheap, and there's nothing in there but a few pieces, which is fine, because this is not a lot of barbecue sauce. When you want to get the national brand barbecue sauce, you can get a big bottle for the price that this one would cost, because this one's better. They're using a lot of ketchup. Oh, you could, you could, <laughs> you could smell the whiskey in that. If it was drinkable, I'd drink it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put that down in there. Now we may have to see if we can kind of stand that bag up. So without wearing that barbecue sauce, go ahead and put it in that way. The same way you see me beating it here, because this is a thick barbecue sauce. This is not that little thin ketchup barbecue sauce that you get with the national brands. Anything you can do on a bulk scale is not gonna be good. We don't want the McDonald's version of barbecue sauce. Okay, we want some real sauce because the chicken is plain. Chicken's been fried well. That company took care of that. What we want to do is want some real barbecue sauce. Okay, now that's all empty. If I wanted to, I could chase a little bit of water in that bottle, swish it around, and add that too. But I'm not trying to wet that chicken since it already has, it's already frozen. Once it releases its own moisture from being frozen, That'll be fine. So you can do it like I'm doing right here. You kind of move it around, making sure that you leave the thicker part on the bottom. Because in a while, we'll come back and we'll flip that. But we want to start out with the thicker portions on the bottom. Make sure all of the meat is covered. Make sure every bit of that meat is covered. Because it's not covered, somebody's gonna get the piece that has no barbecue sauce in there. And you know they'll complain. The biggest complaints are the people who didn't have to cook it themselves. And you know, once that person comes to your house, you don't invite them back over again, do you? All right, so this one will be easy. We'll leave that in the refrigerator <clears throat> for two hours. Then we'll flip it two more hours. We'll put it in the oven, take it out of the bag now. Remember, take it out of the bag because you don't want to burn the plastic bag. We'll put it in the oven at a preheated 400 degree temperature in the middle. Cook it for one whole hour if it's frozen. If it's not frozen, about 40 minutes. And then that'll be some great tasting chicken. We'll bring it back from the kitchen. We'll plate it here for you so you can see it. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the man's kitchen. Now, since we're doing it on the set today, the chicken is done. It went an hour at 400 degrees. Those Barbecue seasonings had a chance to melt in there and they're good. You want to see it? There it is. Now, look at that. It was once just box chicken. And now it's something that you would love to eat. So I got a small leg. And I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of here and I won't keep you guys any longer. And you won't be able to keep me any longer because I'm going to eat this all. Well, I'll share with the rest of the staff, but that's about it. But there you have it. You have that same chicken, but the, hmm, it's no longer on the surface. It's worked its way through that meat. Top it off with a little mashed potatoes. You have a great meal. And you can do those mashed potatoes from a box. You don't have to go out and mash potatoes. So like I said before, banquet chicken, you can fry your own chicken, you can fry chicken on the grill. But so the best barbecue chicken is where the chicken has already had a chance to cook. 
When you try to put barbecue sauce on oil, oily chicken, it runs off. So this is much better because that skin is already finished, it's not really oily. So like I said, you can go out to KFC, go to Popeyes, churches, your mama's, banquets, whatever it is. Put that on that chicken for uh, at least four hours, flipping the sides in the refrigerator. Then you do it in the oven and watch how it tastes. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. And right, not before I finish this. I'm sorry, I wish I could share it. I wish you could smell it. If they ever invent smell vision, mmm. That whiskey barbecue is good. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome to a sort of manhood. We got another crazy story coming at you today. A Marysville woman accused of killing her husband had reportedly returned to the scene when firefighters first arrived and began to give him aid. According to new uh, charging papers filed in Snohomish County Superior Court. Diane K. Thompson, 63 years old, initially suggested to Marysville's firefighters, giving CPR to her husband, that maybe he had fallen off of the roof. She changed her story on September the 4th when talking to a battalion chief with the fire department telling her him her husband had laid down in front of her car according to the second degree murder charges. She said she ran over something when she drove away but didn't know what it was according to the charging papers. Now, this was an altogether different story than when she called her own daughter just seconds after running her over her husband to tell her daughter that it was her father she ran over. So she says she did. You can tell the truth to your family and something different to the public. She showed the battalion chief where she parked her car outside of her mother's place a couple of blocks away, hidden in some trees. Now, the firefighters couldn't revive uh, Mr. David Thompson. He was 64 years old, just one year older than her. They observed injuries to his forehead, left arm, and chest area that were consistent with being run over by a vehicle. Now, the deputy uh, prosecutor Julie Ann Mora wrote, she said eventually other family members showed up to the house. Another daughter reported that her mother would often tell her, I just wish that your father would just die. And I wish he could just kill himself. Now, the daughter reported she moved out because of her parents' relationship. At one point, the wife alleged that her husband was so drunk and off balance that he probably fell in front of her car or her view. And that is when she accidentally ran over him but the house surveillance footage showed otherwise. So today, the best thing to have is footage because you can't really lie anymore. Now, the wife remained jailed this week pending charges of killing her longtime husband by running over him with her car. Diane K. Thompson, 63, like I said, is accused of second-degree murder and the death of David Alfred Thompson, 64. The couple had been married for 45 years and they had five daughters. In domestic court records from 2018, both sides said their relationship had deteriorated over the past decade. The wife alleges a long history of abuse, which she often do in these cases where they kill her husband. The husband, as well as friends and family writing on his behalf, denied physically hurting her, but acknowledged both parties had a substance abuse problem with excessive drinking and cannabis use on almost a daily basis. Now, their relationship had become very toxic, the husband wrote, while he was still alive. He continued on that court appearance while being alive, saying, We have not shared the same bedroom for some time, and essentially try to avoid each other as much as possible. Now, these are the words of David Thomas, Thompson excuse me, while he was still alive. Around the same time period, he filed for a divorce, then subsequently withdrew that case a few months later. He should have never done that. 
He tried to reconcile with his wife, and this, this only led to a worse relationship, and ultimately his murder. The police report states David Thompson was intoxicated and arguing with Diane around 6 p.m. September the 4th, as they often did. At some point, another family member heard them leave the house at the 1500 block of 140th Street Northeast. Now, when they left, they were still arguing. It says she looked outside to see his wife leaving in a gray Hyundai. David Thompson was down on the gravel, not moving. The family member called the police. David Thompson appeared to have been hit by a car. He died at the scene after sustaining head injuries and body injuries. The cause of death until they came up with one was still under investigation as of that Friday. Now, according to uh, the Snohomish County Medical Examiner's Office, sheriff's deputies found the wife at her mother's home where she had ran to. The front end of her car had damage that looked consistent with hitting a person. Okay? Now, I bring you stories many times. Assault on manhood is, is the cases, whether it's a little boy, or whether it's a teenage boy, or whether it's a grown man. Because males' lives in this modern economy seems to be disposable in each one of these cases. You could always kill a guy, but if you kill a woman, there's a problem. So, tell us what you think about this story. Stick around because coming up right next is the preview of Killer Wives 14. By the time this year is over, it'll be well over Killer Wives 60. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. It was an accident. Maybe he fell in front of the car. Maybe it was a one-armed, one-legged man. Maybe it was a whiz. Maybe it was a whizzy boss. Maybe it was a baby. Maybe it was a Maybe it was a girl. Maybe it was a girl. And now, we bring you Killer Wise, Episode 14, Snake Oil. These are the case facts against Margaret Bruton, who shot and killed her own husband. Isn't trust a bitch? <sighs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Made famous for celebrity shows featuring Celine Dion, Wayne Newton, and for the murder of one Mr. Ronald Rudin.
I care less about what you think of me and more about what I think of me. Abundance coming easily, I'm tapped into that frequency. What you think of me ain't none of my business. What you think of me ain't none of my. What I spark don't get you lit, so why you give a shit? Talking out your ass, we revoke your membership. Falling off the cliff, hope you niggas get a grip It's enough to go around if you tune into the sounds Tap into the universal laws to get it all You already have it in you, but you hold it and you stall We ain't gotta die to see heaven, we can live it If you want something, gotta be willing to give it Not for the return, purely for the feeling Take some time to get a line of structures that we building Expansion we increase cause we have to Thank God every day and your mama cause she had you She really didn't have to, you here now Make the best of what you see and what you hear now Got into the driver's seat, you gotta steer now Safe trip, picking love over fear now I care less about what you think of me and more about what I think of me Abundance coming easily, I'm tapping to that frequency What you think of me ain't none of my business What you think of me ain't none of my business